thinner herbs are here again. Um, and I just wanted to show you my herb garden. Um, it's just coming along. It's, um, it's only mid-June up here in New York, upstate New York, but you know, we've had so much sun and so much rain that everything is just kind of exploding this year. And I just want to just, just very briefly just show you what I got coming in here. I mean, we, I got a lot of the usual suspects, like, you know, rosemary down here, a few different types. That hasn't quite filled in yet. But then I've got some of the more unusual suspects, like this thing, this huge mass here is, is, is hyssop. And I put this in a few years ago, just out of curiosity. It's, I don't use it culinarily. It's, it's quite strong and a, um, a friend of mine uses it for medicinal purposes and I give it to him sometimes, but it's, it's quite a surprise song, but it comes back every year and I, I, I kind of like it and it gets very pretty purple flowers at some point. And um, so over here we've got um, marjoram, obviously. Well, I don't know obvious. Obvious to me, because I love it. And, um, and just plain old Gen Genoese basil here that's doing really well this year. Um, the last couple of years, I don't know, my basil was really sucky. And behind that, you can see this is all lemon verbena and it's taken off like crazy. Behind that is, um, is pineapple sage. And um, in early fall, this thing explodes with red flowers. It's actually really kind of, of a nice herb. It, um, it doesn't taste like sage, but it actually does taste like pineapple. And I made a really nice sorbet last summer with this. And I, I think I'll, I'll do it again because it was kind of great. You know, chives, we got blossoms here. We've got a lot of nasturtium with their beautiful little flowers poking out. Marigolds, because those are supposed to be good companion plants for herbs. This is the first year I'm trying marigolds here, and hopefully, I, they, you know, they're going to, you know, take some of the, 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 the bugs away. I don't really know. This is, uh, this is lovage that tastes like celery like on steroids it's really strong and there's regular um celery behind it and this is tarragon this is my sort of like part shade um end of the garden so i've got some more of my northern um herbs down here like this one is tarragon it's i think it's going to do okay it doesn't look like much right now wait here look at this here's a nice big long one um actually it's doing better than i thought and there's chervil I don't really use chervil that much, but you know, I like it. And that's doing somewhat okay. And then I have a lot of other, I've got, you know, oregano and thyme and lemon thyme and um, Greek oregano. Um, I got hot peppers growing here too. I think this is, these are, um, I can't remember what these were. These are, I don't know. We'll have to wait till they, till they, till they get a little more um, developed, and I'll tell you. And this is uh, Thai basil, which I use tons of, and that's uh, summer savory, which I also use tons of. I love that more than this is like one of my new favorite herbs, and that's doing really, really well. But what I really wanted to show you today was um, my uh, salad burnet, which is another new favorite of mine and um i put this in about hmm, like three years ago and it keeps on coming back it's another sort of northern herb that needs you know part part sun part shade it does really well down here i have another really big one over there that i let go to flower and because i'm just kind of curious it hasn't flowered yet but there's little buds but what I want to do is um, I want to cut some of this. This is the most amazing herb. It, it, it really um, tastes like cucumber. It's got a beautiful taste. And what I want to do is I want to cut some um, for you. And I'm going to bring you inside, then show you how I make a really simple, like early summer, late spring salad with it. So yeah, it's, the, the smell is incredible. I wish you could smell it, but the thing is, it's really easy to grow. And if you want to, maybe my salad will entice you to want to grow some yourself. And it comes back. 
I'm up, I'm in, up, I'm in the Hudson Valley, upstate New York, and it comes back, it's one of the first things to come back every spring. So um, it's pretty easy. It, it really, it'll handle a lot of, lot of cold. So, um, okay, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit more and then I'm gonna, I'll meet you in the kitchen and I wanna show you something really nice to do with it. Okay. Okay, so I come inside and I got my salad burnet that I just picked from the garden out there and it's looking really good. I gave it a little wash, but it wasn't really dirty. And it's really sort of beautiful and like funky. It's a very strange looking uh, leaf pattern. And the smell is, is really weird. It really smells like cucumber. I really, I don't understand, but that's what it is. So what I like to do, since it smells so much like cucumber and all this stuff is, the cucumbers are just out at the farmer's market it's like June and I, this is the type of time of year I really want to make this cucumber and cucumber salad. So what I like to do is, you know, you start out with a bunch. What I did here was I just lightly salted these cucumbers just to get a little of the water out, which actually looks like they didn't even give much water. And just arrange them on a plate. You know, this will be for like, you know, two or three people, just one little, um, level of cucumber, right? And these are really nice. I kind of, um, I kind of stripe them, you know, so it's like sort of half, so they have ha half of their, um, their peel on them. So that looks pretty nice. It's like a little puzzle. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. So the other thing I, that's right in the market now are these gorgeous French bre breakfast rad radishes. And these go really well with cucumbery things, in my opinion. So um, I'm going to use some of these. And um, and the deal is I'm just going to... Oh, look, these are really cute, right? Um, these, these are a lot uh, less astringent than a lot of um, the round cucumbers you get in the grocery stores. So... You know, these are really quite sweet. So I'm just gonna cut these into rounds to mimic the cucumber rounds, right? Just like that. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna do a couple of them for you and show you. But this is a really great combination of flavors. Where'd you see what I put on it? Okay. I think maybe yeah, just for a sake now, let me show you. Look at that. I love this. It, it, it just looks like it reminds me of these, this game I had when I was a kid where you put all these round pieces in, 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 a, in, a, in a, what the hell was that game called? I don't remember. But, um, but you put them in like a thing that with like a spring on it. And if you pull one thing out, all the pieces go flying. That's kind of what this reminds me of. Anyway. Um, so put those on. Oh, look how cute that is. That's really nice. All right. That really, really looks pretty. Maybe we should, we should probably do maybe a couple more, don't you think? I mean, here's a nice big one. We'll do that. Oh, here's some more. All right, stuck on there. Okay. All right. More little puzzles. Oh, I love the look of that. Okay, so now what I thought would be really nice for this, since it's kind of, not bland really, but just very gentle tasting um, salad, maybe do an anchovy vinaigrette for it. So this is what my, I, I really like anchovies with um, with radish. I think it's a really nice combination. And I'm, I'm loving lately those Ortiz anchovies. So that's what I've been using lately. So, oh, one thing I have to say, when, when you use anchovies for anything, like oil-packed anchovies, you know, people, I, I, yeah, I just sort of figured this out myself. The oil, once you open them up, the oil goes off really quickly. So, you know, you get the, you know, you know, when you first open a nice, you know, like open a new, a new jar of these, they taste so great. And then you stick them in the refrigerator and a couple of days later, a couple or a week later, they taste kind of funky, you know, and that's because they really go off. So what I try to do is if I'm going to open a new jar, I try to use them within, 
you know, like a week, you know, ideally even like a, a couple of days. So anyway, so I've got my anchovies in here and I'm just gonna grind them up a little bit. You know, they don't have to be perfect. A little lumpiness is actually, in my opinion, very, very, very admirable. So now here's another thing I wanna show you. You know, here's our salad brunette, right? So what I do, another thing you could do with salad brunette, which is really, inc it makes the most delicious vinegar of like just about all the, I, I mean, I've made vinegars with almost all my herbs and I like them. I love thyme vinegar. I love lemon thyme vinegar. I like basil vinegar, but hands down, salad brunette vinegar is like my favorite. It, it, soaks in to the vinegar like almost immediately like within a day you get this amazing oh my god it smells so good and um i used for this particular batch i used oh look who's here tiny is here um hi tiny how are you doing for this particular batch i used um uh, what did i use i used rice wine vinegar but you can use you know any good white okay i think we got it okay you have to go I know he, he's very interested in the anchovies. Um, you could use any kind of good um, white vinegar. I would, I would think like not red wine vinegar so much it would maybe compete with the the, the cucumber smell uh, taste too much. But you know, like a, a, a white wine vinegar, champagne vinegar. I suppose you know cider vinegar would be okay. That might sound seem a little strong to me. But anyway, this has got a really nice flavor, and it will extend the uh, flavor of the um, of the uh, burnet. So let's put a little of this, not a lot, just a little. That should do it, and just smear that up with the anchovies. And I'm you know I, I'm not, no salt right here because you got anchovies. I slightly salted these, so we don't need this. Then I have a really nice olive oil from Lazio that's very gentle and delicious. Put a little of that in. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Just smash them up a little, you know. You could... It's no big deal, but let's just give it a taste. Just make sure it's good. I mean, how is it not going to be good? Oh, it's really good. <laughs> Okay, let me just get a small spoon. So what I want to do now is just pour in a little of this right here. Make sure you get the anchovies up, right? Yeah, this is good. Oh yeah, it, it's it's it looks good with it's a little more feral with the the like little pieces. You don't want it to look too tidy. Oh, this looks really delicious. All right, okay, got that going. So now what I want to do is put on my um, brunette pieces, which are really beautiful. Just slide those on like this. Just take off. You want to pick this stuff when it's not too developed. Like this time of year, this is kind of really perfect. Let's see, it's a good more. Okay, here. Nice. Nice. Okay, here's a good one. Look at that. Just take the top off it. These are great. You just these are also delicious. Just thrown into a green salad. They're 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 beautiful. I've actually made pesto with this stuff too. It's sort of amazing. I mean, it's really delicious to be to put on fish or something. Is that enough? Yeah, maybe. What do you think? Another couple. Another, oh, be quiet. Oh, no, oh my God, he's on my back. Oh my God, he just came up on my back. All right, that was really bad. Okay, so. I think we're done, but I think what we need is a little black pepper. And this is a really beautiful early summer salad that, you know, you could have before, you know, a, a grilled fish or chicken or just as a lunch, you know, maybe with a side of a little cheese and bread and oh, that, that's it, right? Kind of gorgeous. And, you know, I want to tell you, this stuff is really easy to grow. So if you're... If you're contemplating putting some of this, a salad brunette in your herb garden, just go do it. I mean, it's getting easier to find this, um, a little, it grown in little plants in nurseries. I mean, when I first started growing this, I had a really hard time finding it, but now I kind of, it's, it's getting a little bit more popular. So, you know, just put it in and I'm telling you, it will, if you have some, 
you know, decent soil and you take care of it, it will come back every year. This is my fourth fourth year with this stuff and it just comes back bigger and better than ever. So anyways, so I'm gonna check in with you again a little later in the season to show you how my herb garden is, um, is growing and also take you to another area of my herb garden where I have other herbs such as my, my fennel and um, anise hyssop and borage and sage and a lot of other things I have scattered around and we'll go, maybe I'll take you to see that in you know in a couple of weeks or so okay well bye everybody hope you enjoyed this